Hey Fox, welcome back to another video. I want to show you a bad habit I kind of developed over the years um, using Bitwig Studio. So here you have all these note clips currently playing, right? And when I want to edit something in these clips, I usually, and this is ingrained in my muscle memory and I really try to change it, um, is that I have to double click on these clips, right? So now I can edit these notes, but the whole bottom uh, section of Bitwig Studio is replaced with this editor, right? So I can't edit something in the chain. Uh, to edit something on the instrument here on the kick, right? I have to double click on the track itself, something like this. So now I can edit here the kick. And when I want to change something on the notes again, I have to double click here on the clip again. So this is kind of a bad workflow because I'm constantly switching between the, the, the chain and the clips. And I think it's not great actually to do it the, this way. So I try to change it today and I want to train myself to this kind of uh, new workflow. And what I did is firstly, I use some shortcuts. So the first shortcut is basically that I use page up and page down to select the tracks here, right? So, so I can switch between the chains down here just with page up and page down. And you can do this here on the shortcuts panel by um, I think select previous, uh, select previous track and select next track, right? You can see your page up, page down. That's, that's what I did. And the second thing is I'm using the tab key for changing, uh, changing to the note editor. So here I'm selecting basically the first note clip, which is the kick track or the kick clip, the kick clip. Yeah. Selecting this by just clicking once and then I hit tab. And then the top part of Bitwig Studio is replaced with the note editor, right? And I also can edit down here something in the chain. So notes and chain at the same time. And when I hit tab again, I'm back in the session view or the arranger view. So I think this is a much, much better workflow because now I can select here whatever I want to edit, something like this, hit tab and boom, I'm in there. Using page up, page down to select whatever track I want to select. Would be better to actually have the clap track automatically down here. Maybe I find uh, some kind of shortcut for that, but at the moment I'm using page up, page down. So I can go here to the clap and can edit my clap and also I can edit the clap clip track clap note clip okay you know what i mean um another benefit of this is that this note editor is also more detailed so i can also extend here this to automation this is not something i can do i think in here um here i have to switch to this view right this is the note here. You can see there's nothing here I can extend. I have to switch here to the automation editor panel. And then I'm again, I'm thrown out of the notes. So I'm constantly switching between automation, notes, and of course here um, the, at the chain, the instrument chain. But this, with this tab workflow, I can basically select the clip, hit tab, I'm editing, editing all my notes. I have all my automation data down, down here. And I also can edit the chain itself, right? So maybe go back here to e-kick. You can see now when I want to change the automation for the kick, right? And I want to change, let's say this decay setting, I just click once on it and then it's automatically here selected. And then I can draw in automation data. And this is clip automation data. So it's perfectly nice for the clip launcher because you can duplicate this here or duplicate, sorry, um, duplicate this, select this once, tap again, and then you can edit all this stuff in here again, right? And it's different from here. It's a different clip. So this is basically, I think, a better workflow. The only problem is, like I said in the beginning, um, the old workflow is highly ingrained in my DNA from Bitwig Studio and constantly double clicking here to edit stuff here, double clicking here to edit the chain, you know, 
I think it's better to use tab, so I have to use this. So please, next time you see me on live stream doing the old, the old workflow, please, you know, correct me. Uh, so I'm getting used to that. I also want to give you some examples what you can do um, with this kind of new workflow or how you progress into some kind of arrangement because I know a lot of people have um, yeah, problems with arrangements or getting out of this you know initial creative loop here. So how do I get this into an arrangement, right? So an idea would be to actually utilize the clip launcher here and just keep it as it is, your initial loop, and just stupidly clone the whole scene here into um, yeah, a second copy of that. And in here, you try to come up with some kind of automations um, that makes this scene different from the first scene. And it's all about difference, right? Make it a bit different. And in the end, you have then hopefully a lot of these scenes in here where you made some creative decisions. And then you have a pool of ideas or scenes or patterns you can then later on use to make an arrangement out of this. And in the arrangement phase, you can focus completely on intensity or storyline of your arrangement without having to come up with some creative ideas for the patterns because you already have this, right? So here in this phase, basically you try to clone the first idea to a second scene. And in here, you try to make some automation. So we go here into the polysynth first. So here we have some notes in there. So what we can do is we can clone maybe here this, um, this chord, change some notes. So we can say here the Valhalla Supermassive is way too loud for this. So let's select here, uh, select a different level. Maybe select a different uh, modulation amount here for the envelope. Also the um, delay here, the mix knob. Let's bring this down. Okay, so this is the, the second uh, iteration here, the first one. So here, let's go to the base. And you can see I just double clicked. That's what I, that's what I told you. It's the muscle memory. I don't get this out of my muscle memory. I just have to click once, then I tap. I have to get used to it. So let's select a different, um, different notes. Maybe delete this. Um, delete this. Move this over there. And maybe move this up here. So let's here yeah, use different decay setting. Maybe a different modulation amount. Maybe a different wavetable position. A 
could also use here a delay delay 2 and I start with mix 0 because I want to don't want to have a delay on the first clip so initially this is my default setting here and then I um, bring this up here okay so here the clap we can maybe use um, again uh, we can use a different decay setting, maybe. Maybe I want to have here a longer one. And in this clip here, I want to have a shorter one. And then we can use here the, um, the hi-hats maybe and create some, let's see, hi-hats are here, okay. Let's create your different velocity uh, kind of groove. Maybe different decay setting here. Width of setting. Okay, so then we can clone this over here to a new section. In here, I maybe don't want to have all these different chords. I just want to have one chord, maybe. Right? It's the bass here. The bass I want to have only on one note. Change here the mix. The clap I want to have again a bit shorter. Different volume setting maybe here for the heads uh, for the for the claps. Or maybe I use velocity for that. It's probably it's probably better. And probability. So now we have basically a three different version of the same idea. So this is basically how you progress. You start with an initial idea with an eight bar loop, four bar loop, then you just clone this over to the next scene. Come up with some ideas for creative differences, how you change it up a bit. Again, you copy this over to the next scene, small little differences, sky is the limit. Just, you know, get yourself out there and try to come up with some creative ideas and uh, later on you can decide if you actually want to have something like this in the track you can switch from scene to scene and then you see oh well this scene works well with this scene it's it's almost kind of like chord progressions right where you see oh this chord works very very well with this chord and so on and you didn't know that before right so you have some stuff in here some resources you can try out certain combinations and then you will maybe you know 
get an arrangement easier out than before where you had to create an arrangement and make some creative decisions and try to mix stuff and try to master it and make it loud and so on. So it's probably easier to just stick, you know, to this thumb rule of thumb and um, copy stuff over from scene to scene and mock, make small kind of changes to it. Um, so this is my idea. This is what I want to train for myself also to do it. Also the habits here with the new uh, key commands using tab for that instead of double clicking here all the time. I think it's a great workflow. It's also a nice workflow. I think using the clip launcher as a resource panel for your arrangement. And I just want to put it out there and yeah, you know, here are some opinions, what you think about it. Um, I also got my launchpad today, Novation launchpad. So I also try to get some practice down with this device and uh, come up with some tutorials in the future. Um, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video, comment if you have some questions. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.